eight. Thank you very much. I need to um, gather my supplies. So I've gathered my open urethral tray with vinyl catheter. It's intact, unopened, unexpired on your in and out cath kit. Your expiration date is on this little piece of cardboard that's inside your package. So I recommend taping that inside or writing that date out here on your um, package so you remind yourself to say that. I have a pair of sterile gloves and then I have supplies um, for peri care. I've come into my patient's room, I've identified them um, with double identifiers, I've asked them level of conscious questions and I need to ask them their allergies. And what might I, if you remember from reading, there are certain things I need to ask them if they're allergic to pertaining to my um, procedure. And I remember, hmm? coconut. coconut, if I was gonna use the cat steel wipes or creams, yeah, that'd be one. Um, also betadine or iodine, I'm gonna use that to cleanse their skin. Um, if they're allergic to betadine or iodine, I need to find something else to cleanse with. Um, if they don't know, um, we can ask them if they're allergic to shellfish. Um, it used to commonly be thought that if you were allergic to shellfish, it was you were allergic to the iodine that they um, filtered out of seawater. Um, nowadays, most people who are, they found, who's allergic to shellfish has to do with the protein in the shellfish, not necessarily the iodine. But still, if they don't know and they are allergic to shellfish, I'd rather err on the side of caution and find something else to cleanse them with. Anybody in here allergic to shellfish? I don't know, I don't know why, because most of the time it's a protein. So I'm asking those questions. Then I'm gonna get ready to do my procedure. I'm going to put my covers up from the bottom of the bed. And the reason I'm doing that is it exposes um, my area. I'm gonna make my patient will see me now. So it exposes the bottom half of my patient, which I need but it allows them to still have covers up top because otherwise they might get cold and so it makes them a little bit more comforting. I'm going to position my patient and our mannequins, the legs go out like that. In real life, real life your patient's gonna have um, full legs. So for a female, um, typically you will ask them to bend their knees, put their feet together and relax their legs so they sort of fall out to the side if they can or if they can spread them as wide as they can if they can't do that. In a male, if they just relax their legs, that usually is enough to get to where you need to go. Um, our patients do this. Prior to um, cathing them, I'm gonna do an abdominal assessment. So we always do an assessment of some sort prior to our intervention. So we can reassess at the end to see um, if it was effective. So most of the time, a patient is going to need a catheter because they're unable to void on their own. So what type of things might I need? or I expect to find when I assess their abdomen. Distension. distended. So depending on how long it's been since they voided will probably depend on how distended they are and how tender it is. So I'm gonna do that assessment and then I'm going to gather my supplies for my peri care and do that prior to my procedure. So I have my clean gloves and I have a basin of warm water I have a towel, I have a cloth, and I have two washcloths. Here, so you can see what I'm doing. So you'll either have soap or foam cleanser or whatever it is you use wherever you're at. So I'm gonna get my one rag wet with my warm water. I'm gonna put foam cleanser all over it. And I'm gonna do peri care. Peri care, the main things we want you to do is remember you're gonna clean usually um, away from you for a female so one swipe down from top to bottom away from you we're going to change the area on the cloth go one swipe near to me top to bottom change the area on the cloth and go one swipe down the middle top to bottom with that cloth get rid of that cloth just use a clean cloth with just warm water and rinse top to bottom away from me change the area top to bottom near me, change the area, and top to bottom down the middle. And so we've cleaned, we've rinsed, and then we're just gonna pat dry. So for peri care in our um, competency, you can demonstrate, there will be prompts for you to do so, or you can verbalize it. But if you verbalize it, you need to do it in 
very detailed. Big things are the way that you do it and that you change the portion of your cloth to feed swipe. You don't use the same area twice. If you had a male, you would cleanse them by taking your cloth with your soapy Osami water. You're going to wipe around the head of the penis one swipe. We're going to change our cloth, go around behind the head of the penis, change our cloth, and go around the base and the scrotum in one swipe with our soapy water. Then get our clean water around the head of the penis once, clean around behind the head, change, and around the base and the scrotum. So there's that one and pat dry. So each is three swipes changing the cloth. If you have a male patient, you need to also verbalize that if it was an uncircumcised male, you would retract the foreskin when you were providing peri care. You can leave it retracted at this time for the rest of your procedure, but at the end, we're gonna say we would return it to the natural position. And that's a mandatory behavior. It could cause problems. Does anybody know how much experience you have with these things? And there's a difference between circumcised and uncircumcised. This is an uncircumcised, so the foreskin that was missing on that one is usually comes down to some extent over the head of the penis. Sometimes it will cover it completely and sometimes not, but you need to pull that back. You don't force it, you just pull it back as much as it will go um, to expose the head of the penis to make sure you cleanse it properly underneath there. And then we're gonna return it to that position when we're all done. If we don't, it can cause constriction around the penis and then it uh, prevents blood flow to the head of the penis and it can cause a lot of problems for the male patients that it may lead to them needing to be circumcised at a later age in life um, and it could just be a really big deal for them so we'll make sure that we take care of that appropriately so i've cleansed my patient and take my gloves off and get ready for my procedure So I have my um, open urethral tray. I've already checked it's unexpired and it's intact and unopened. I'm gonna open my kit. It just peels, yours will be brand new. It will peel off there. Take it out of it. This receptacle, I'm just gonna sit at the foot of my bed. I'm gonna use that as my crash receptacle. My kit is folded in an outer wrap. I'm gonna orientate it in the middle of the bed between my patient and my trap receptacle so that my first opening will be away from me. I'm gonna open away from me to the sides and then towards me. I don't wanna wait for the away from me to be the last open, because if I waited to the last and I opened it, then I'm going over top of my sterile field. I mean, I don't wanna work over top of it if we don't have to. So open it away, side, side, and towards me, you can grab the very edges. <coughs> if I needed to move it, I'd have to go under it and I can move it around. So that looks pretty good position. Right on top is our drape, so we still have drape. It's dog-eared back. I can see the shiny side and the non-shiny side. Shiny side is the non-sterile side that's gonna go down um, on the bed and towards my patient. So I'm gonna reach in and pick it up with my bare hands from that shiny side. Unfold it. Hold it by the corners, hold it up and away, and drop, and bring my hands up. So now I've extended my sterile field all the way up my bed to my patient. Everything else in there, I'm um, going to touch sterilely. I have gloves in there and another drape. I'll show you those in a minute, but I'm not going to use those gloves. I'm going to use these gloves. So I have my table positioned right here so I can put my gloves on and I can still face my sterile field. So I'm not gonna put my back to my sterile field. It's more up towards the head of my patient because I'm working down here and I'm not gonna be up here. So it's gonna be here, put my gloves on, out of the way. Then I can come back here. So there is a pair of gloves. I'm not going to use. I'm going to take them out of my sterile field, put them in my trash receptacle. There is another drape in here. This is a fenestrated drape, line drape. I'm not going to use this. It is an option, but you don't likely see people use it. If you do, you have to line up that cut out diamond 
with the area that you're going to work with on your patient. And for a real person, it's not very practical because your patient may move, this may slide, and it's just more difficult. With a male, it might be a little bit easier, but a female, I'm not going to use it. So I'm just going to throw that away. Then I'm going to pick up my container just to show you what's in here before I um, manipulate everything. I have a packet of Thobidine iodine to cleanse my patient. I have cotton balls to put my iodine on. And I have forceps to use my um, iodine cotton balls. I have a container to collect a urine sample. I have a packet of lubricant and I have my catheter. So if this was intact, unopened, and unexpired, that means everything in here is intact, unopened, unexpired, and good to use. So I'm going to put it back the way it was, put it back on my seal. So I've got rid of my gloves and my drape that I'm not going to use, so now I'm going to manipulate what I am going to use. When you work with this, I sort of think of myself as a robot. I have two sterile hands. I'm going to go in, do what I need to do, and come out. If I need to put anything in the trash, I come out and put it in my trash and come back. I don't work over top of it, moving across it. So I need my iodine. I'm going to open it. I'm going to pour it over my cotton ball. Put my forceps on top of there. Bring this out. Throw it in the trash. I need to get a sterile urine sample. So I have a little vial here. I'm going to open it and sit it out of my way. I'm going to open it now so I, I'm going to eventually dirty one hand and I don't want to have to fight with it when I have only one hand to use. <coughs> so I'm going to open it and put it there. I'm going to get my lubricant and I need to lubricate my catheter so I'm going to open this. And there's different options you can do with your lubricant. You'll see some people will pick up their catheter and stick this in the end like that to lubricate it. And I just choose to put a block in the middle of my tray and dip it in there to use it. But there's some leeway with how you're going to it, bring it out of my sterile field, throw it away. So now I have everything set up the way I need it, um, and I did that with my two sterile hands. So now I'm going to get ready to catheterize my patient. I'm going to move this bucket and this little receptacle is what's going to collect the urine when it comes out. And I want it closer to my patient, so it's all sterile, my hand's sterile, so I'm going to move it closer to my patient. I'm going to pick up my forceps. And this hand now, my non-dominant hand, I'm going to contaminate. I'm going to um, open the labia on my patient. I'm going to stick it off the side and apply pressure. Now this patient doesn't have much of a labia, and this is what it's actually going to look like for competency. You'll see some of our other models. There's going to be some replica of labia that you're going to have to separate. But this one's pretty easy. So I freeze that hand. I'm going to pick up one of my betadine soap cotton balls, clean from top the bottom one swipe away from me, bring that dirty cotton ball out and throw it away. Come back and get another cotton ball and one swipe top to bottom the closest to me, bring that out and throw it away. Third cotton ball top to bottom down the middle, bring it out and throw it away. Now you may have extra cotton balls so I'm going to pick those out with my forceps that I don't want to use and throw everything in the trash. Nice high drop so you don't contaminate your finger because urine's going to go into this receptacle and I don't want to have soaked cotton balls. I'm going to say um, if something you're not going to use in your kit does not make it back into your kit, that's not going to penalize you just like with our um, tray kit. I'm going to pick up my catheter and dip it in my lube if I haven't already lubricated it. And then what I want to do as I insert this, I want to keep track of that end. I'm going to try to keep it down here in my basin. I do not want it to go flipping all around as I'm catheting, because then I'm going to contaminate it. That could be a problem. So I'm going to control this and keep it in my basin. I'm going to hold this um, approximately two inches away from the tip. Don't get, some people this week got obsessed with, oh, I need it. how far is two inches? You want it far enough away that you can control it and thread it into the urethra without contaminating it or your hand. So. I'm going to go take a deep breath and we're going to go into the urethra and I'm just like we did our tray cast we're threading it from a distance. I went two to three inches in a female and I started to get urine so that's as far as I need to go. I could go a little bit more just to make sure. So now I'm in as far as I need to go. Urine is coming out. I need to get a urine sample. So I'm going to take my non-dominant hand 
I'm not going to let this catheter move in and out anymore. Okay, I'm going to keep it where it's at. So I'm going to take my dominant hand and I'm going to secure it. But now that I've touched it, I can't let it go into my patient. That's going to secure it. I'm going to just pinch it with pressure inward to stop the flow of urine and get my little container. Pull it up here, pick up my catheter, unpinch. Urine's flowing in there, filling it up. It's gonna pinch, put my catheter back in my basin, unpinch, but I never move it. I just pinch and unpinch and get my lid and put it on my okay. If you can secure it with one hand, great. If not, okay, and I'm just gonna move it off the table. So sterility at this point is done. I'm just securing that catheter to continue to empty the bladder. So I'm just waiting, the bladder is empty. And I'm going to pick up my catheter and I'm just going to move towards the foot of the bed and drop it on my drape. So I have urine in here. So I'm going to pick this up. I need to take it to the bathroom to measure it and dispose of it, but I need to get my patient's face first. So I'm just going to put this on the floor under the bed because otherwise I don't want to put it on their table. Even though I put my sample there and I want it out of the way so I don't step in it or kick it, which I know I would do if I didn't put it out of the way. So this is all covered in betadine and lubricant. So I'm just going to wrap this all up and put it in my trash. These have betadine and lubricant on them. So I'm going to take them off and put them in my trash. I'm going to wash my hands, get my carry care item, and a clean pair of gloves. And we're going to do carry care. So if you demonstrated or verbalized in detail in the beginning, you could just say, I would do it the same way I did it in the beginning. Because we didn't add anything, there's nothing new here, and you're going to do it the exact same way. We want to clean off the betadine and the lubricant, because betadine could cause irritation to the skin. Or I could just demonstrate, I have my, soap, my warm water, my soapy rag, and I'm going to clean top to bottom away from me one swipe, clean bury the rag. Top to bottom near me, one swipe. Clean area of the rag. Top to bottom down the middle. Get rid of that rag. Have just a clean rag. Put it in warm, clean water. Top to bottom away from me. Change. Top to bottom near me. Change. Top to bottom down the middle. And then we're going to pat dry. If I had a male, I would do it the same way I did it in the beginning. One swipe with a soapy. Um, rag, just warm water, around one swipe around the head of the penis, change your rag, behind the head of the penis, <coughs> change your rag, and around the base and the scrotum, do that with your soapy or foamy rag, have just a rag that has warm water, I'm going to rinse around the head, change, behind the head, change, and around the base and around the scrotum. So if it was a male, what else do I need to say at this time? I would return the foreskin to the natural position. And then I would lower my bed, raise my rail, before I do that, cover my patient, reposition them. And then I would also take my sample, label it, and send it to the lab. I would also take the urine in my basin, take it into the bathroom, measure it, empty it, and document in eyes and heads. And then I would document my, the, what I did. My when we document, because there will be documentation for this procedure, this is competency, we're going to document date and time, what you saw, what you did, and how your patient responded. So we practice that too. So any questions?